May the Lord bless you, brethren. This is Enrique Agustin, one of the two managers of these pages, together with Sister Gigi Soto. Today we're going to talk about the anointing of your homes. The Lord has asked through several prophets, servants, and watchmen that we should anoint our homes with oil. This is something that we suggest you do. It is optional, of course, but many have received this request from the Lord that we should do this as an external sign of an internal commitment, of an internal change of heart to follow the Lord, to obey Him, to try to please Him to accept Him as our only and exclusive Savior. The anointing in the Bible always symbolized that that person or that object or that property was marked as special to the Lord, as the Lord's, actually. And this is what the anointing of our homes means that according to the change in our hearts we are dedicating our lives our properties our homes and our families to the Lord Jesus Christ and that is what we do it is important to clarify that the oil itself is no magical barrier against anything Again, it is an external sign of an internal commitment to the Lord. Please understand that we're not saying at all that the oil in itself is a magical barrier or anything like that. No. The only one who can protect you is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God. And the oil represents a symbol of the Holy Spirit and His protection over us, over our lives, over our homes. I'd like to start with a prayer first. Lord, thank you that you allow us to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the brethren. Thank you for the opportunity of coming before them to bring them this message. We are here in your presence, Lord, because we want to declare, to confess with our mouths that you are Lord, that you are our only and exclusive Lord and Savior, and that we trust you completely and that we trust you only to keep us in the cleft of your hand and keep us safe, to keep us close to you, like the shepherd who looks after his sheep. We are your sheep, Lord. Thank you. We trust you and we trust the promises of the Lord that are written in your Bible, in the Word of God. We trust we declare, we confess with our mouths that we believe the promises of the Lord, that we trust Him completely. Your word says in Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, 
nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Lord. We have read your word in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we thank you, thank you, Lord, for your precious, wonderful, spotless word thank you lord we trust in you we trust in you only and we believe your promises of salvation and protection for your children we confess all this and we ask all this in the name of your son jesus christ amen We recommend that you use olive oil. Lord, may this oil be a mark upon our homes, representing the mark upon our hearts, the mark of your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit who marks us unto salvation and if it pleases you unto protection from the coming judgment, from any natural disaster, from any illness, from any pestilence. You are Lord of all, you are Lord of the universe. And before your name, every knee shall bow. Everything in nature bows down to you as every human knee will. We trust in that, Lord. May this oil be a reminder that our homes are anointed by you and protected by you. May your angels guard it as warriors representing your mercy, your grace, and your protection over us. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we're going to do the actual anointing of our door. So you can use a cotton ball or simply you can do it with your finger. Just dip your finger in the oil. And we're going to place it. Here, Lord, this home is yours. May this oil be an external mark of an internal commitment to serve you, to please you. May it be a mark, just like the blood of the lambs was a mark on the doorposts of the children of Israel on that terrible night a mark of protection from the Lord of Lords. May it be a mark representing your Holy Spirit, protecting us, protecting anybody who lives within it, 
we declare and we confess that this home is yours, as well as our heart and our soul. We trust you completely, Lord, for our salvation and for our protection. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We also suggest that you anoint your land all around your home. And you can do it one of two ways. You can do it, you know, with the bottle, just pouring it out little by little, hitting the ground like that. Or the other way you could do it, which is not very elegant, but if you have a lot of land and if you need to cover a long extension of land, then we can use a spray bottle. I know that it's not optimal, but if you do it the other way with the bottle, just pouring along all your land, if you have a lot of land, you're gonna need a lot of oil. If you can afford it and if you wanna do it that way, it's fine. But if not, I found that this is a way to do it very efficiently. You mark your land this way around your home. And as you're doing it, you should pray, you should confess, Lord, we trust you. We believe in your promises of protection. We believe in your word. Do unto us as you did unto Lot, as you did unto Daniel, as you did unto Abedango, as you did unto Noah. Protect us, keep us safe, Lord. We believe your word. We believe the precedence of divine protection of how you protected your people through the trials. Please do the same with us, Lord. Apply those precedents to us because we believe in your faithfulness and we believe in your protection. In Jesus' name we pray. It is important to confess and to remind the Lord of the biblical precedents and that you believe them. Not because the Lord needs to be reminded of his precedents, but because by doing so, you show him that you believe in his word, that you believe in his promises, that you believe in his protection for his flock. And again, brethren, this doesn't have to be some complicated ritual. You know, these are just suggestions. Remember that the real change, the real anointing has to happen inside. This is just between you and the Lord. Doesn't have to be any sophisticated or complicated ritual. You don't have to call your pastor. You don't have to call your priest. You don't have to call your bishop, anybody else to do it. This is between you and the Lord. If you wanna do it along with your family, that's wonderful. But just know that this is just something that you're doing in the intimacy of your heart between you and your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Important things to remember, brethren. It doesn't matter how much oil you put outside in your home. You have to take care of things inside your home, just as you have to take care of things inside your heart. As we said at the beginning of the video, the external anointing has to be a representation of the internal anointing and it has to match up with it. What do I mean by that? First, if you have any unholy objects inside your home, like images of saints, of virgins, amulets, rosaries, talismans, Whatever it is, unholy books about witchcraft, the occult, anything that has to do with that, movies that have to do with that, te uh, horror movies, horror books, magazines, anything 
that is unholy, you have to get rid of it. Read Joshua 7 about Achan so that you understand what this is about. If you have any of those things inside your house, and that also includes pornography, well, you know the things that offend the Lord. You should strive to get rid of it. If you live in a house that is not yours, of course, and the person whom you're renting from or, or whatever does not want to get rid of those things, then you have to declare the blood of Christ over your over that home at all times and over those objects. The Lord knows those things are not yours. So we trust in his mercy. Ask for his mercy over that and ask for his mercy on that home. The other thing you have to deal with is if there is any disorder or sin inside your home if there is strife if there is adultery fornication drunkenness use of drugs anything that offends the lord envy um murmuring jealousy all those things whether they be in the flesh or in the spirit, you have to strive to get those things right before the Lord. If you feel that you cannot call upon the Holy Spirit and ask Him, ask Him to help you. He is there as our guide to lead us to all truth, to protect us, and to edify us. Ask that presence to help you work out those things inside your home that you know do not please the Lord. And in the name of Jesus, declare the name of Jesus, breaking those chains, breaking those chains, those addictions, whatever it is, whatever situation it is. Put it in God's hands, declare it, and keep fighting spiritually for it until you achieve it. Always through the Holy Spirit, not through your own strength. Brethren, this judgment is imminent. It is imminent. It means it can happen at any moment. The original asteroid prophecy declared that the judgment was imminent. It could happen at any moment after the death of Evangelist G.J. Avila. That was the only preamble to the judgment. Evangelist G.J. Avila has already passed. This is all in the original prophetic letters written by Prophet Efraim Rodriguez. So there, there have been many versions of the prophecy after that. Many variables. People have added to it. They have subtracted from it. But the original prophecy, and you can check this out for yourself by writing to asteroidprophecy at gmail.com, and we'll send you all the official and original prophetic documents and videos. The original prophecy stated an imminent judgment in the form of an asteroid heading to the west of Puerto Rico. It is a judgment because of the apostasy of the church. And it is a judgment for the church. So that the church will get right before God, will come back to his paths of holiness, will stop selling out his gospel, will abandon double lives, for the pastors to stop leading the flock into paths of perdition, it is a judgment meant to cleanse the church and to bring it back to its knees and to its first love. That is the purpose of the judgment as declared by the original prophetic judgment, the original prophetic message, excuse me. 
Other versions have come up with things like saying that this asteroid is Revelation 8, Wormwood. That it is one of the seals, the trumpets, or the bowls of wrath, whatever they want to call, call them. That is not what the original prophetic message said. The original prophetic message stated that this was a judgment prior to the events of the book of Revelation. Prior to the judgments described in the book of Revelation and prior to the rapture. Precisely to get the church ready for the rapture because the church as it is right now is not ready for the Lord to come and snatch it away. There is a lot of apostasy within the church. There is a lot of hidden sin. There's a lot of idolatry. There's witchcraft. There's sexual sin. There is immorality. People being one way inside the church and a completely different person, a worldly person outside the church. That is not what the Lord wants. He has been calling people back to his paths for a long time. And apparently people just do not want to listen. So he is bringing this chastisement to bring the church to its knees and to its first love. That is the purpose of this judgment. And if you hear another version out there saying that this judgment is for the rest of the world who have rejected Christ, that it is for the people outside the church, that it is a judgment, one of the judgments in the book of Revelation, that it does not concern the church, then you're listening to a message that is not the original prophetic message of the asteroid. Get this right, because there's a lot of confusion out there the message has been changed by certain people. It has been watered down. It has been made to seem as if it does not concern us, the church. Great mistake. It does concern us. This is for the church to get ready. The judgments of Wormwood, the judgments of Revelation will come, as we believe, after the rapture. And they are for the people outside the church who rejected Jesus Christ, for the ones left behind because they were not faithful to the Lord. And it is also at the time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, in which the Lord will deal with the nation of Israel. But again, this judgment of the asteroid, as declared in the original prophetic message, is not part of that. It is a judgment prior to all of that to get as many souls as possible get it ready for the rapture and to cleanse the church of the ravenous wolves that are taking many of the flocks into perdition. There are no dates given for this judgment. It can happen at any time. Today, tomorrow, in a week, in a month, in a year, in five years, the Lord only will decide when this will come to pass. We must all get our heads out of the sand and keep preparing. Keep preparing first spiritually, which is the most important thing. If you have not come to the Lord as your only ark of salvation, you must do so. Do not wait, brethren. Do not wait. If you are not part of the body of Christ, the Lord is still giving time, calling you, calling you to come to Him, to repent of your sins, to accept Him as, our, as your only and exclusive Savior. If you have accepted Christ and you have strayed away, if you are backslidden, the Lord is calling you home. Come, come back in repentance. He is waiting for you. He does not want you to be lost. He wants to spend eternity with you. And He wants you to take place in the greatest event, the blessed hope of the church. 
the rapture of the church. If you are a Christian and you're de a living a double life, or if there is hidden sin in your life, come before the Lord, repent and confess it. He's calling us and he's waiting for us with open arms. Like he was waiting for the like the father was waiting for the prodigal son. Take advantage of that extra time that he is giving us because of his immense grace and come back to the Lord, cling to him, repent of your sins, and accept him as your only and exclusive Savior. The Lord's mercy is immense. He is still calling his children to him. He is still calling people to get into the ark. He is still calling and looking for his lost sheep to come back, to come back to him so we can spend eternity with our Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Keep praying, brethren. Keep crying out to the Lord for the lost souls, for the people, people within your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, the people you know. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the Holy Spirit that he will touch those lives. Keep giving testimony of the salvation that can only be achieved through Jesus Christ. We must look for the lost souls, brethren, in whichever way you can. You don't know how you can touch a life with just a word, a video shared, a flyer. There are so many ways, so many ways in which you could touch and plant a seed. The Holy Spirit will do the rest. Keep warning the people. Keep warning the people. There will come a point where the ark's door will be closed. But in the meantime, we are called to work for the Lord. We are called to look for the souls, to talk to them about Christ, to warn them of the coming judgment, and to show them the love of a father who wants none of his children to be lost. In the name of Jesus, we pray that we keep on that path, on the narrow path, and that we persevere until the end. May the Lord bless you all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.